Jogafolio Do is a complete disaster. It is officially scored lower than Madam Web on Cinema Score. It has a measly 33% critic score and a somehow and impossibly worse 31% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. Yet, it is led by a generation defining actor. It immediately follows the once highest grossing R rated film of all time and it had a budget of $200 million. Jeez. So, what the f went wrong? What went wrong? I've done some investigating, read oh. hundreds of critics reviews and analyze the film in detail so that we can get to the bottom of this case what we're going to do is this have a chat about the good and the bad yep. discuss some things that the masses are saying and finally calculate the official make night score to determine Ooh. definitively if this film is as bad as everyone says i can't wait to find out what the make night score is going to be it's i think you wouldn't be the only one <laughs> <laughs> you sound convincing. <laughs> so, Fred, what is Joker 2? An exercise in self-indulgence masquerading as originality. Oh, that's scathing. Talk I didn't to me mind about it. So, no, no, I think I think I can see where it's come from, but elaborate. I was well, I spent most of it thinking this isn't as bad as everyone says. Mm -hmm. It was clear i could see why people were offended you know like not offended in the way like that's offensive but it's, it's almost offensive to my senses yes because they really were like we're gonna do whatever the fuck we want here and you have to sit and watch it yeah okay which is the only reason i think people are so annoyed because i didn't like have a, a shockingly bad time yeah i was like yeah this is kind of bad yeah, okay. I liked that they tried something new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Genuinely. Like, think about some of the best sequels of all time. Godfather Part 2. Yes. Aliens, another example. Oh, yeah, yeah. Things where, in both cases, they really tried something different. Like, they went full-on character study of Michael Corleone, Godfather Part 2. Mm -hmm. Aliens, let's make this an action film. Move away from the horror. And they're two of the most seminal sequels yes. of the 20th century. You can. S I respect that they went into this saying, "We have a really successful film. Let's like try and beat it." The end, we're not going to try and beat it by doing the same thing again. We're going to have to go outside the box. Let's try a musical. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that's awesome. And it was weird, but also like it's a weird setting and i'll be honest with you i don't think it was that much worse than the first one so you didn't really like joker one not really it was copying taxi driver wasn't it okay and it was all woe is me literally i am the most unfortunate person there possibly could be and then i go kill someone then i go on a rampage mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's me versus the world the world the world's a real problem <laughs> like it was that's kind of self-indulgent as well. Yeah. And then there was the, in the original, I won't spoil Joker Part 2. I'm going to go into Joker 1, which I already did because I said he killed someone. But if you're listening to Joker Part 2, surely, come on. Probably watch Joker 1. Watch one. Joker 1. So, like, the, the, the fact that he was, he was kind of um, schizophrenic, like he was having visions, and it, it turns out it was all like a big that. twist. No, it just felt a bit like, okay, of course... Of course that was made up anything that derivative was maybe yeah that's what i felt and this you can't say it's derivative <laughs> some big some critics have have they well well but I, no i'm with you derivative on that. of what maybe i should ask that well I, they didn't elaborate themselves they uh, but they no, they did speak specifically about them they said a derivative musical uh, which again, I just think is completely incorrect. Do they mean because they're not original songs, maybe? Yeah, but surely um, that doesn't make any musical that uses a soundtrack. Yeah, that, that is therefore by default a derivative musical. If that they just doesn't make said sense. Said it specifically, I'd, I'd like to understand why they. Uh, this seemed pretty far from I'm derivative with you. for me. Um, having said that, it's not like I enjoyed it. Are we doing our gut reactions? Please tell me if you were if you could put how much you enjoyed the movie this isn't the make night score but no. how, if you put how much you enjoyed this movie out of 10 5.4 okay yeah what, what about you 5.9 right okay we've got very similar scores there i yeah. would say i feel a lot more defensive about this film than i think uh than i think other people do well you've read hundreds of reviews on it i have extensively researched okay. this film and the people are being 
horrible Scathing. like horrible about it and the truth is i think it's completely unfucking justified yeah i i think it's like i say it's a witch hunt basically everyone's just kind of jumping up on a bit of a bandwagon of right. hate but why there are some fatal flaws which i'm going to offer to you later okay that i think are central to why the enjoyment of this film fails. It is the responsibility of the filmmaker to make it an enjoyable experience, 100%. But just because it's not an enjoyable experience doesn't therefore mean that it deserves 30% Rotten Tomatoes. It gets lower than Madam Web. It's got the lowest DCEU score in history. It's got 5.3 on IMDb. I just think it's completely unfair. And I think that the thing is, it really does have real character to it. And it's really trying to do stuff visually in the way that it was directed. I think Todd Phillips has a really amazing command of color and he uses it in the storytelling in a really beautiful way. Again, I want to stress this. It is his job to make an enjoyable film and that doesn't mean using colors in a commanding way. But I also think that it is a well-made movie in some ways and color is one of those that I think really was quite special about this movie is a lot of the story is told through through color. I'll get into that in a bit later anyway, but... um, Obviously, it's a profound character exploration. This is kind of both Joker 1 and 2. I think that the question that it's asking of, let's take this villain that's been a commanding, mysterious presence forever Mm -hmm. and really try and figure out what it would take for a human being to become like that. I think that's a really cool thing to do. Like, I'm really grateful that they did that because I always see the Joker and I'm like, that's a really cool character. I want to know more about him. And this is exactly what they're doing. I like the fact they've tried that, and I will not have anyone say that Joaquin Phoenix is anything other than amazing in this. I think that he is just incredible. It's made some very bold decisions. Yes, some of it didn't land, but if we want good cinema, we need to be forgiving of failed boldness and ruthless with effortless mediocrity. Deadpool and Wolverine got 7.9. This got 5.3. That is completely ludicrous. Deadpool is an insult of a film. This tried as hard as it possibly could and failed. Oh, that's such a good point. It really is something that should be not championed. Look, it is a failure. But the the vitriol and witch hunt, which I'm glad I avoided, Mm. because I purposely went into this. it, It was inescapable hearing that this wasn't doing well and people weren't enjoying it. And I went into it trying to avoid as much as possible yeah. to have a blank slate. And immediately I was like, does something happen that makes this bad? You say there are some choices and there are narrative moments that I didn't agree with. Yes. Not just with the style, but story points where I was like, I, uh, that kind of is a bit bad. Yes. And the overall thing that they went for, I do think failed. Yes. we. I can say it's the musical element. That's not a spoiler. But most people know that it's in some form musical. But outside of that, it's it not was that fine. Bad. It's, not, it's <laughs> not like... A f- yeah. it, didn't, it wasn't offensive to me in any way. I heard arguments that the original Joker was, especially for comic book fans, f- very frustrating because they kind of yeah. made a taxi driver in a comic book setting and it goes against... The um, the universe, the canon. Canon, that's the one. <clears throat> uh, but also, like, they even shoehorn in right at the end, Bruce Wayne's parents dying, like, every bloody film. You, yeah. you think you're going to get away with it, but then they, they even in this one, they, they shoehorn his, his parents' death. I mean, they don't do that in this, but there is a thing at the the end of this which I didn't agree with as a an ending. Still... Like, this one was fine. Like, the whole time I was like, yeah, this is fine. Yes. This has the same feel as the last one, but at least they're doing something a bit different. Yeah, yeah it's weird. This is a weird character. <laughs> and maybe I don't enjoy it, but also I don't see why it's been completely drawn through the mud like this. So I want to understand, Yeah. as someone who did decide to really delve into the weeds, what did you find? Okay, one of the things that makes this really quite an insufferable experience for people is specifically the narrative, because what it does is, at its core, the first movie is asking, what would it take for a human being to become Joker? And I think in the second movie, what the question it's really asking is, how would that human being handle that? And so on the face of it, the plot is love stories, courtroom dramas, all that. But actually, the plot is really about Arthur versus Joker. And it's all a character exploration. There was some real kind of on-the-nose Jungian references. Absolutely. 
but it gets confused when they made it and what happens is the tangible material plot that is used basically to keep something moving whilst we explore this character which is the courtroom stuff and all the love stuff and all that mm. has a deeply dissatisfying conclusion that effectively right. feels like it's gone absolutely nowhere Mm. And yeah, so okay. people have spent two, two and a half hours in a really miserable environment with a really unsatisfying way to conclude what it's concluded. I'm not going to give any details, but... Mm. And I think that it really is that narrative of... If you look at it as a character exploration, it's actually quite a good narrative, but it gets confused. It presents you yeah. almost two narratives in parallel, one which is more tangible and real and also really fucking annoying and leaves a bad taste in your mouth and sure. the whole time you're in a bad environment that you just don't want to be in. He does have a very mopey... Like, it's the same with Joker 1. You, you get... You, you do find you're in quite a dark place watching it. <laughs> Absolutely. It's very much like, this is morbid and nothing is particularly nice about this whole setting. So I can understand. And to add to that, if I'd have gone in knowing nothing, my opinion on it may be worse. I agree with that. I, I definitely like put some thought into how I really felt about it, aside from being defensive that it wasn't that bad <laughs> when I decided to give it a 5.4. Like, if I, I didn't want to be purely gut reaction for this. I wanted to be like, okay, if I just watched this and I hadn't even heard anything, I probably would have enjoyed it a bit less. I'd have been like, this is dumb. Why have they done that? But it's the fact that all I've heard about is how this is this is an absolute aberration. People hate it. But you're like, right, okay, is it? <laughs> <laughs> now the ending, you make some good points. Like it does, it does derail. And it, even at this point in my watching it, I was like, I'd, I had spent a lot of time justifying situations mm -hmm. and being like, this isn't that bad. I, you know, what? it's kind of shit, yeah. but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. My thought process was that. And then near the end, I was like, okay, it's getting a bit... <laughs> yeah. Getting to the point where some of the points you made are valid. And the way they went about it, even even a, a apologist <laughs> could see. Yeah. I think you're absolutely working. bang on. Even as somebody who wants to defend this film, I still want... I still have to concede that plot-wise, it was a mess. And there was just a real... It was trying to be too clever, I think, with the narrative. And we're doing 12 Angry Men in an episode in a couple of days, so check that out if you're listening. Mm. And one of the things that it does so well, I think, is it has it just has a brutally simple plot. It's like, here are the stakes, here's the beginning, yeah. here's the middle, and then here's the end in 90 minutes. And what Joker 2 does is it goes, okay, so we're going to have this and then we're also but we're also going to have this but don't forget about this and then we're going to try and do this character thing and then we're going to have like a love and then a courtroom and then like a and you end it and yeah. you're just like where the fuck did any of that go like you make such a good point that to if you strip down how basic the actual sequence of events is you get to a point when you're about at the hour and a half mark which, as we both know, perfect. <laughs> That's when you should be finishing per Perfect films. film length. <laughs> but you get to the point where you think... I remember checking my, my what, uh, checking my phone to see what time it was, thinking we must be nearing. <laughs> and then being like 45 minutes, thinking, man, that is a bit tough. <laughs> That's a bit tough to bear. Yeah. It wasn't like Trap where you were enjoying the ride <laughs> at all points. It was Even almost the opposite. To to <laughs> you did get to a point in this where you're like, fuck it hell, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Considering yeah. if you strip back exactly what happens in this film, there's no need for it to be two hours 20. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. I think you could take like whole plot things out of it, just completely take them out and it would be a much better experience. Yeah, some, some sequences were just not necessary. I do want to say though, added to things that I like. You mentioned Joaquin Phoenix. I find Joaquin Phoenix a bit of an interesting fella. Mm -hmm. Just from the just from interviews, obviously he's a bit Marmite. I err on the side of, yeah, I find him a bit pretentious. So, you know, I'm not saying he's a bad person, but it does affect the performance a bit in a way that it shouldn't. But what I do want to say is I thought Lady Gaga was really good. I was going to ask you about that. Okay, yeah, yeah. I really thought she was good. I was spent a lot of it at the start again, being like, I'm enjoying Lady Gaga on this. I think she's really good. <laughs> Uh, so another perk. It wasn't just that it was fine. She was she was I, good, was she? That was another element I liked. I thought that 
performances across the board. I mean, Brendan Gleeson's always great. Brendan Gleeson's awesome. I don't know if there was any performances that I thought were that bad. I found the guy who played uh, Two Face had a really buttery voice. Yeah. Okay. Harvey that. Dent. Ha- Harvey Dent. A lot of people didn't like him. Mm. Yeah. And what do you think of that thing? People like, did wow, not. He's, uh, he's did you like him? him? No, but I thought his voice was dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> for those listening on youtube this is part of our road to can series where we're reviewing films until someone invites us to the can film festival we're currently working through the entire imdb top 250 in alphabetical order felt like that was a fitting starting point for us we're also going to be catching new releases as they come out so if you're enjoying this and want to work through some of the classics please click the link on the screen now to see our other films you can also subscribe if you want to join us on our journey. Okay, so you mentioned how comic book fans were unhappy with Joker 1 because of the universe thing with Bruce Wayne and all that. This will be the first major DC comic film to be released under the new DC Elseworlds banner. So mm. this is the term that was created in 1991 by DC Comics for stories which are outside of the canon and mm. set place in alternative realities. So that's why you've got... Bruce Wayne as a kid, you've got all these different timelines messing up. They have actually acknowledged that. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Elsewhere, yeah. So they've, they've obviously got a similar thing with Marvel on the what ifs. I don't know if they have an equivalent in the comics. You wouldn't be surprised if they do. They took our what if series. No, they, they, they've been watching May Night. Like <laughs> everyone else. <laughs> yeah, they've only been doing it the last couple of months. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it's something obviously that people really like the concept of. of Having a how things could have happened, implications of things uh, happening. Oh, okay. All right, well, you mentioned Lady Gaga. One of the critic opinions, which I thought would be interesting to get your take mm. on, they didn't really use Lady Gaga properly. They should have had her belt out some notes. It was, it was clearly a choice. You know, Lady Gaga is obviously a very accomplished singer, mm-hmm. and her approach to the songs in it was croaky and crackly not really uh, exclaiming and not carrying her voice at all which meant that some of the higher notes would break a bit and to be honest the reason why i didn't really mind so much is because joaquin did a similar thing and it was clearly the character is is doing it in that way i think that it was weird enough that they shoehorn a musical into this if they'd have then had Lady Gaga fucking belting, <laughs> belting out these songs and Whacking Phoenix just like either going for it. Well, the, the only options there would be Whacking Phoenix to be painfully below par or maybe he really goes for it and <laughs> be painfully below par. Painfully <laughs> below par. So what he did in this case was it was like the character obviously can't properly sing. Yeah. He's just going to kind of have a go at these songs. Yeah. And Lady Gaga also although she was more tuneful, was kind of holding back, clearly. Yes. But there were a couple of instances where she did go for it, and it almost carried a bit more weight. Uh, the I can't remember the exact part because I only watched this once. But So there's a, one of their duo songs, the, the last one. It's, it's quite a climactic part of the film for the characters. She does go for it on like one of the last notes. And you, I remember thinking, wow, okay, cool. Okay. It's cool that she's she's had a chance to really put her all into one well i tell you what i think that really kind of highlights what i think probably the second and kind of the only other real big problem with the movie was they kind of did a musical and they also kind of didn't a musical and yeah it they was pussy really... foot around a musical didn't they and i think that really the thing that bothered me the most the music was taking place within the universe mostly yeah and the actors would begin singing before any music came in and because they aren't singers and because it's not obviously a musical you kind of forget that it's a music a half musical (laughs) and then one of the characters just starts fucking singing and it's not something you really get used to throughout the film like just time after time a song ends and then you're like forget that it's a musical and then they just start singing again and you're like what the fuck is where's this coming from it does make me think how much i'd love to have been a fly on the wall for the conversation that kicked off should we do a musical yeah okay like i don't know whether whether it was joaquin driving it or todd phillips or (laughs) 
or Lady Gaga. <laughs> Why well, I, I saw somebody say that uh, he didn't want to do a second movie and then they just piled so much money in that he was like, fuck it, I might as well. And I think that's partly why there are all these really strange decisions is he was just like, fuck it, I might as well. Todd. Yes. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so did do you know if Joaquin had quite a bit of creative control in this? I don't know. That's what I'd heard. Okay. But someone had the idea to make it a musical. <laughs> Who was it? But this is the thing. Do you reckon they brought Lady Gaga in just as an actress and she just started singing, singing all their lines? And they were like, oh, fuck. No, I know that they didn't because I know that Lady Gaga was giving Joaquin Phoenix notes throughout it because he was shaking. He was so nervous about singing in front of all these people. Mm. So thank God the movie did so well because, you know, that would really destroy his <laughs> yeah. confidence if people were nasty about it. <laughs> you know, taking risks like that <laughs> and seeing the reward for your endeavours. Oh, bless him. Um, Whacking Phoenix. I thought he was really, really good in it. Here's why. I'm not, it's not often that I will comment on acting because I don't really feel confident doing it. But I think that. So some reviews have said Whacking Phoenix is not as good as the first one. And I think that's so unfair because mm. maybe he's not, but he's still incredible. There are a lot of actors who just struggle to do happy or sad or mm. angry. And he has scene after scene after scene where he will have to be simultaneously hysterically laughing whilst trying to swallow it, whilst being embarrassed, whilst looking miserable or heartbroken or desperate. And then literally in the same shot, We'll have to pull a whole new deck of emotions out and mm. pull those off. You can't finish this film and the only thing that you can say about Whacking Phoenix's acting was it's not as good as the first one. That's so unfair. Such a cop-out because I just think without any substance of why you feel like that, I just don't know what you what your reasoning could be. Mm. He is phenomenal as the Joker. Like, that laugh cry that he does... It's horrible. ...is, a, like, incredible, like, how he manages to do that. Um... Whether you like the character or not, I guess it's more he's morbid as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe he brings you down. But saying your comment on Whacking Phoenix is acting is worse. This, the, my, yeah, I don't know. I think that's just lazy. Just think, another reason for people not to like it. And that's exactly where I think a lot of this stems from is it is a massive witch hunt. It's not a good film. I think it's a 5.9. Maybe up, maybe lower. It's hard to say for, for sure. But it is not as bad as people say it is. It's just so totally unfair. And that, to be honest, his pretentiousness, which I mentioned to you, part of the reason I'm ambivalent towards him is how he comes across. That probably doesn't help. You're almost certainly right. Like, yeah. people... You, the worm turns so quickly, the court of public opinion, and it can go from... He did a very famous interview on David Letterman, and I, I don't want to butcher the facts on this, but he had a reason for doing it this way. I think it was something to do with one of his brothers being very publicly shamed. There was, there was a bit of media press really horrible to his brother, weren't Something they? like that. And then he went on David Letterman and had like this excruciatingly awkward interview purposefully. And he was just horrible to like it is really horrible to watch i've tried to rewatch it i struggle with awkward that's one i can't do i really struggle with awkwardness and yeah it's it's d just terrible to watch it's not nice and then it turns out he was just doing it as like a bit to that's just publicity pub stunt. yeah publicity stunt around you know you guys have been horrible so this why so that happened people obviously think he's he's being an arsehole and then oh no he's actually being righteous and then he's being self-righteous and then he wins an oscar and people are like oh yeah he's the best thing since sliced bread he can be rude to people if if they're being obnoxious and asking questions and now it's just oh it's our turn to find him annoying again yeah you can't take you, you always do and i don't mean you but everyone always do take how much we like the person into account when we assess their acting ability, but you shouldn't. Like, mm. yeah, he is annoying and pretentious and weird, but at the end of the day, when you sit down to watch Joker, fully I do, you need to just assess, is he doing a good job, yes or no? I feel like people say that Henry Cavill is better than he is because he's so likable. 
Like, I don't think uh, he's that good yeah, at acting. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think he's terrible. He's perfectly fine. But he's just the best. But he's just so likeable. Everyone's oh, like, yeah, yeah, he's a great actor. And it's like, mm, I don't think that would yeah. go that far. Uh, to be fair, I don't see much. I, I've not seen people say he's a great actor. I've seen people say he's the perfect Superman. Yeah, that's fair. I will agree that I've never watched Henry Cavill in something and thought, you know what, Henry Cavill really is great <laughs> in this. He's just, like, so handsome. Is he? <laughs> he's he's so handsome and nice. And he's, an, and he's, like, an, a geek and loves yep. games. And yep. if you watch his interviews, he is, like, yeah, so smart. He is, and he's so likeable, and he's so down to earth. Um, if you're listening at this point, I'm. we're not going to go into spoilers. We won't ruin the film, but if you really want to keep this film completely fresh, you might want to dip out here, because I do have a couple of specifics that I want to ask Fred about. Steve Coogan's character and performance. Mm. What did you think? So he's not lampooning, but he's doing a bit of a... Uh... 60s to 70s grilling reporter grilling. yeah reporter grilling but also the the accent he's doing is sort of like walter cronkite newscaster of that time um i thought it's quite cool seeing him because i didn't know he was going to be in it uh and he's such an adept impersonator like even though he's going for a caricature accent he's so on it with them that you you just like seeing him did you have any anti-feeling towards him I think just because I'm so used to seeing the characters that he plays mm. it felt a bit weird to me I don't think he did a bad job of it I just think I it was a weird choice to put Steve Coogan there it was a bit like with June and uh, Christopher Walken Christopher Walken <laughs> it was like why have you picked him for this role like this is such a morbid film yeah you put well, Steve you put Alan fucking Partridge in yeah. it for, for the American audience though obviously Alan Partridge isn't famous some people know Steve Coogan because he's yeah. in a lot of stuff but they might not know him by name I, I don't right. think it'll be as jarring for them Okay, the term for ado given to the Joker sequel comes from the 19th century French psychiatrists and it means the Can madness of two. What does it mean? Madness of two? Holy <laughs> shit, do you speak French? So, the uh, obviously that's referring to Harley Quinn and Joker, Arthur Fleck. Arthur Fleck. Is, and the relationship that those two guys have. Okay, it's time to settle if this film justifies the hate. The score it has on IMDb is 5.3 out of 10. Mm. We're going to visit the Mate Night Machine, Ooh. where we will press some knobs and Beep twiddle boop. some buttons, Eww. and it will spit out a final score, which, as everyone knows... is never wrong. Certainly hasn't ever been before. <laughs> never has, never will be. Never will be. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, let's go. Oh, well, there we go. Oh, my God. Whoa. 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 What an adventure. Jesus Christ, man. That was a folly I do if ever I've seen one. <laughs> so we have returned from the main eye machine. It has spit out a number, which, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm just the sound Spare of that. I'm just the sound. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so IMDb gave 5.3 out of 10. We have put it into the main eye machine. We have come out with a final score to determine if Ooh. we think that that is a fair score. So. I, and IMDb, let's, let's be f reasonable, will go lower as well. Without further ado. Mm hmm. That was a really funny joke, that friend. <laughs> You just completely ignored it. Well, without further ado... Oh, it was a joke! <laughs> <laughs> you like, just stared at me for so long. I'm like, he's just not without fucking... Without folly ado. Yeah, nice. With, without further ado, the main night machine has That's given good. Joker 2 a final score of... 6.14 out of 10. Mm, very fair. I you mean, know it's, what? it's always right, isn't it? It's always right. And I think that for a quick closing statement... This film was miserable and insufferable and just a, not a nice experience, but there were some great performances. Mm. It was directed reasonably well. There, yeah. was, some, there was some good song choices. They went for something. They tried they something. They really tried something. Yeah, I, th I think what you say, self-indulgent, I say trying something exciting and fun and new. Thank God it's not just another commercial fucking mm. moneymaker, which it definitely could have been. Mm. But yeah, it wasn't a very fun film either. No. But it was quite well, I think, in, in it ways was bit, other it than... It was a bit tough to get through, wasn't it? Other than plot and the s certain elements of the sound, I think that it was 
reasonably well made. Yeah, we don't really get the whole the whole hate on this one. I don't get the hate. Having said that, six point one four is below the par of. It's a bad film. We'd recommend it. To yeah, her, we yeah. wouldn't recommend it, and that largely comes down to it's just a miserable experience to sit through. But yeah. thank you so much for listening in on this. Um, this has been part of our new Road to Can we're series. Go, we're getting there, baby. If you enjoyed it, we are doing the IMDb Top 250 in alphabetical order so that we can kind of bottle what makes one of these films great, what separates them from the rest. Um, so please feel free to check them out. Uh, new videos out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays. Uh, and we're on your favourite podcast platforms. Thanks so much. Thank you.